it's Ben from No Time To Game here. If you followed this channel at all, you'll probably notice that there's a definite slant towards turn-based tactics titles. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to make a list of 10 fun titles that have come out in modern years. So anything like post 2010-ish. As it feels like we're kind of in a new golden age for turn-based tactics games. This isn't in any particular order, just a list of 10 titles I enjoyed. So, number one. Troubleshooter, from the Korean developers Dandelion, released in April 2020 for PC, Troubleshooter is a massive game. You're looking around 80 to 100 hours just for the main story. It's set in the city of Valhalla, a strange city where law and order is a bit of a mess. But stepping into the role to help are Troubleshooters, part cop, part bounty hunters. These unique individuals wield incredible powers to defeat the rising tide of crime. The game itself is deep. Following a more XCOM style of gameplay, where, where cover and such are very important, the game has tons of systems to play with. So if you're a min-maxer, this game is for you. <laughs> There's so many hours of fun just maxing out your characters. Number two, King Arthur Knight's Tale. From Neocore Games and released in April 2022 for PC, King Arthur Knight's Tale is a look at what happens in Avalon if King Arthur's soul becomes corrupted. We take on the role of Mordred, the only being able to slay Arthur. He's awakened by the Lady of the Lake to fulfill that destiny once again. Night's Tale is a dark and twisted story. Will you become a more noble Christian hero, or a pagan tyrant, or something in between? The game is actually a solid mix of CRPG style exploration um, with a fun turn based system. You get to rock around the map as the knight you've chosen, exploring, interacting with characters, and then when you go into battle, that's when the turn based system kicks in. And the knights you get to bring with you are really cool as well. There's such a wide variety, all with a kind of like unique personalities. And they'll join you based on their own personal principles. So if you're a good guy, maybe you'll get the good ones. If you're a bad guy, maybe you'll get the bad guys. So are you going to save Avalon? Number three, the Iron Oath. Command, endure, and prosper. Is the rules that Curious Pandas games first seen in April 2022 on PC? Iron is the rules Iron Oath live by. Iron Oath is a very well filled out game. The world of Calum is not a safe one, and one that is constantly changing to make each one through the game kind of unique. You must take your fledgling mercenary band on an epic adventures, raising their own iron around the world over decades, building up your ranks by delving into dungeons and taking on missions, usually resulting in you taking in, in high stakes tactical combat. But can your men and band survive the ravages of the dark denizens of Caelum? And the greatest foe of all? Time. Number four, Lost Eidolons. Ocean Drive Studio released this awesome game, Lost Eidolons, for PC in October 2022. But it has since released on PS5 and the new Xbox. Set in the land of Benerio, a once shining kingdom that's now under the iron rule of a crumbling empire. We take on the role of Eden, a small-time mercenary captain that through a series of events becomes the main force for rebellion to drive away the corruption. Lost Eidolons is very much a Fire Emblem inspired game, with the option of having permadeath and everything. But added onto it is a very character driven story, and a great looking coat of paint for an indie title. From my point of view, this game is worth playing just to experience the incredible story. Just having an awesome gameplay on top of it is an added bonus. <laughs> Number 5. Wandering Sword. Now for something a little different from the developers, the Swordman Studio. Wandering Sword for PC is a very new title at the time of this video's creation, coming out in September 2023, based on Chinese novels called Wushu, or Wuxia, if you read it incorrectly. <laughs> this is a game that's very into martial arts and Chinese mythology. You take on the role of Yun Wen Yi, a young man, due to unfortunate circumstances, ends up losing his friends and becoming being poisoned, but this leads him to start down the path of becoming a martial arts master. Ye will explore a beautiful pixel art world, reminiscent of the 2D HD style that you see in like Octopath Traveler and such. He'll build friendships and learn many martial arts on this path becoming a master. Now what makes this game a little different is it plays very much like a traditional RPG. You run around the world map and dungeons etc, you see the enemies on the map and when you bump into them, that's when the turn-based tactical system kicks in. It's a grid-based system and it's actually pretty fun and you can even play it in turn-based or real-time just to mix it up a bit. Number six, 
this guy is five through seven. I'm going to cheat a bit here for this next one, as it's three games, not one. As the last three Disgaea titles from NIS have been fun in their own ways. We saw Disgaea 5 come out back in 2015 and is on Switch, PS4 and PC. And Caesars take on the role of Killia as he attempts to stop the overlord Void Dark. Disgaea 6 popped out in 2021 for Switch and PS4 with the PS5 and PC version coming later. And it sees us take on the role of Zed, a zombie who's out to defeat a god of destruction using his special super reincarnation powers. And Disguise 7 is the brand new title at the time of this video, coming out in October 2023 for PC, Switch, PS4 and 5. This one sees us taking on the role of Fuji as he explores the demonic realm of Hinamoto. Hin Hin Hinmumutu? Hinmumutu. Anyway, now, now why have I put all three titles together? Well, while each have their own flair, that sets them apart from each other, they all have that NIS charm in their stories and gameplay and everything. Each keeps the deep Disgaea gameplay that caters to both newcomers and true power gamers that like to break every system and destroy everything. Disgaea is unique and it allows you to go just as far as you want. You want a chill time and just to experience the story? Go for it. You want to drop so many nines when you hit an enemy that not even gods can stand before you? Go for it and anything in between. It caters for everyone. That's what the Disguise charm is. Number seven, Symphony of War, the Nephilim Saga. For me, I wasn't big on indie titles. Then I played Dance and Dragon Games 2022 for PC title, Symphony of War, the Nephilim Saga. And it single-handedly changed my opinion. Set in the world of Tanra, this is, that is undergoing a conflict of succession. We take on the role of a young military graduate that due to strange series of events, rises a new power in the world. The gameplay is really interesting as you don't control single character but squads of characters you build. So you may have a dude on a horse surrounded by dragons or a squad of archers with heavy infantry acting as frontal support. This squad building is really fun element and then you add on that quite large maps reminiscent of the old Fire Emblem games with multiple goals it becomes a really fun romp. Number 8 Langris of 1 and 2. This is the only remake in the list, and it's kind of cheating again. Because NIS released Langris of 1 and 2 as a multi pack in March 2022 for Switch, PC, and PS4. And it's a remake of the 1991 Mega Drive game we knew as Warsong and Langris of 2, which never left Japan. So getting that in your collection is an awesome bonus. The Langris of titles to me are peak tactics in the truest sense of the word. Many other turn-based tactics games have ways of raising your characters to become stupidly powerful, or many other ways to cheese the game. Well, that's not a bad thing, and I thoroughly enjoy it myself. <laughs> like, that's why I put Disgaea above, the ultimate game of cheese. <laughs> to me, Langrissa always felt that each battle was a challenge and a true test of my tactics, and that's what makes it fun. Add on top of that a fun story, if you're seeing you taking on the role of the young prince dealing with an evasion in number one, and number two, seeing you caught in the middle of a battle between forces of good, the good and darkness. I mean, what's more to what more do you want? Number nine, Song of Conquest. So I heard you like heroes of might and magic, and well, Lava Potion heard the same thing, releasing Song of Conquest in May 2022 for PC. This is very much a modern pixel art version of the 90s classics through and through, but this isn't a bad thing. Song of Conquest, even though it's still in early access, still has a load already in it with some fun and interesting races and a very good variety of maps to play on. Basically, is your jam heroes? If it's a yes, go play this game like yesterday. Number 10, The Last Spell. The apocalypse has happened in Ishtar's game from March 23, titled The Last Spell for PC. Mages, in an attempt to end the wars, unleashed truly destructive magic, obliterating nations in a matter of seconds. But a strange purple mist has appeared, and from that mist comes hordes of monsters, destroying everything in their path. So a plan is formed, a final spell, the last spell, you could even say, that will remove magic from the world forever. The gameplay is kind of unique, as it has like the mega turn, that is a day-night cycle. During the day, you build up your little town, hire your dudes, progress your little dudes, build fortifications and such. And then at night, it's kind of like more micro turns, as in you enter actual turn-based combat against the mutants. You send your little dudes out and they will battle those mighty hordes. 
for all they're worth. Because of this, though, and the day-night cycle and all that sort of such, it has a very much roguelike feel to it. So each game will be a bit different to the last one. So as you go about trying to cast the final spell to save the world, growing your forces and fighting greater threats, it all combines for a fun and quite unique experience. Anyway, that's 10 modern turn-based tactics games that I had fun with, and I hope you enjoyed watching that as well. If there's any you've enjoyed, please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to sub and all that jazz, and we'll see you again soon.